Hi, uh, my name's Tim Shu, and I'm from San Jose State University, and this is... Hazel! And we're here to talk about... The, the chain, chain rule. rule! Great job, kiddo. Okay, then. So, uh, the, yes, we're going to talk about the chain rule today. Uh, we'll start with a review of basic derivative formulas. Uh, we'll talk about what the chain rule is good for, what is the point of the chain rule. We'll look at two, the two different statements of the chain rule, each of which is useful in different situations, and we'll look at an example. Okay, so to, uh, for review, uh, so far you've learned that the derivative of a constant is 0, and the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. That is, you take the exponent and pull it down and subtract 1 from the exponent. Um, you've learned that the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And soon, if you haven't already, you will learn the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. You've also learned how to, to, to combine these different derivatives to, to, to find the derivatives of slightly more complicated functions, such as the derivative of a constant multiple is the constant multiple of the derivative. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. Uh, products, uh, the derivative of the product is uh, 1 prime 2 plus 2 prime 1. That is the derivative of f times g is f prime g plus g prime f. And uh, my favorite one, at least to present, is the quotient rule. So, <clears throat> if the quotient rule you wish to know, it's low d high, less high d low, and draw the line, and down below, denominator squared will go. Okay. Um, all right, but what is the chain rule good for? The chain rule lets you calculate the derivative of two functions that aren't combined algebraically, but by composition. That is, by sticking one function inside the other. Uh, that is, if you have a function h of x such that h of x is equal to g of f of x, uh, that's where you, you can use the chain rule if you already know the derivatives of f and g. Uh, so just a bit of terminology here. Often you call g of x the outside function, and you call f of x the inside function. And we'll try to be consistent about having the outside function in blue and the inside function in red. All right, so for an example, uh, you take h of x equals the fifth root of quantity 1 minus x to the 7. Uh, as often is the case, it's better to write this out in terms of exponents instead of roots, uh, and in which case you can write h of x as quantity 1 minus x to the 7 all to the 1 fifth power. Uh, here the outside function is blah to the 1 fifth. Uh, you can think of it as g of x equals x to the 1 fifth. And the inside function is 1 minus x to the 7th. In other words, if you let g of x equal x to the 1 fifth and f of x equal uh, 1 minus x, x to the 7th, then h of x equals g of f of x, and you should think about why this is true for yourself. All right, so here's the first version of the chain rule. So given h of x equal, equals g of f of x, the chain rule tells us that h prime of x equals g prime of f of x times f prime of x. In other words, uh, h prime of x is essentially the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. There, and, but as you can see, there's a little tricky thing about that, uh, the derivative of the inside function is evaluated at x, and the derivative of the outside function is evaluated at f of x, which, is, you know, if, you have, if you've seen this for the first time, this looks weird, like why, the, why do the two derivatives look different like that? Well, you can make it look a little more symmetric by taking y equals f of x and thinking of g as a function of y. So instead of writing g of x, you write g of y. It's fine. You know, variables don't know their own names. And in that case, the chain rule becomes h prime of x equals g prime of y times f prime of x. In other words, uh, taking the easiest one first, the derivative of the inside function is evaluated where it should be, since f is a function of x. And the derivative of the outside function is evaluated where it should be uh, at y, since g is a function of y. So uh, that leads us to the second version of the chain rule. So alternately, if you break the composition down into two steps, you say z equals g of y and y equals f of x, then the chain rule becomes h prime of x, or dz dx, because z, we're thinking you know, this, uh, this composition, z equals g of f of x, makes z as a function of x, um, equals dz dy times dy dx. In other words, uh, in terms of the Leibniz notation, the sort of fraction -y notate, notation that you learn uh, at some point when you learn derivatives, you, uh, the chain rule can think, you think of it as canceling the dy over dy in dz dy times dy dx. Oh, don't tell anybody I told you that. They'll take away my license. Uh, this is bogus. This is like totally bogus in terms of mathematical rigor or proofs or whatever, because you know, these things aren't fractions, but it's useful in a, in a way, as a way of remembering what the chain rule says. Okay, so let's turn to an example. So returning to our, our example, uh, h of x equals uh, quantity 1 minus x to the 7th, quantity to the 1 fifth. So remember, uh, the inside function is 1 minus x to the 7th, and the outside function is blah to the 1 fifth. So in notation number 2, in version 2 of the chain rule, uh, we can break this composition down as z equals y to the 1 fifth, and y equals 1 minus x to the 7th. So you can see if you plug in y, this y value of y over here for y, we get the h of x that we want. 
Uh, in that case, uh, you take the derivative of dz dy, which is 1 fifth times y to the minus 4 fifth. Remember, you bring the exponent down and subtract 1 from the exponent. And dy dx, in, the, in exactly the same way, is minus 7x to the 6th. Remember, it's tricky that minus sign pulls through, and the, and the 1 goes away. And so the chain rule tells us that h prime of x is uh, dz dy times dy dx, which is 1 fifth times 1 minus x to the 7th quantity, all to the minus 4 fifth power, times minus 7x to the 6th. That was exactly what you thought it was going to be, right? Well, okay. It's a little complicated, but it's an answer, which is pretty cool. So again, looking at the result, uh, so if h of x equals quantity 1 minus x to the 7th, all to the 1 fifth, then h prime of x is 1 fifth times 1 minus x to the 7th, a quantity to the minus 4 fifths, times minus 7x to the 6th. And again, the trickiest part is the derivative of the outside function is value where it should be at the value weight of the inside function, 1 minus x to the 7th, and the derivative of the inside function, uh, minus 7x to the 6th, is value where it should be at x. All right. So that should be enough for now. I think, uh, you know, keeping that trickiest part in mind, where the derivative of the outside function is the value where, where it should be, and the derivative of the inside function is the value where it should be, go do something. Why are you doing wasting time watching me? Go do something. All right, thank you very much. Bye.